11 minutes it is now to four o'clock street people i have a complicated relationship with street people there is a thank goodness that that is not me i'm so pleased that i don't have to endure the privations that you know there but for the grace of god go i approach there is a degree of shame that i am so comfortable so materially blessed and here is somebody who has nothing what's the best way to deal with that i buy the general principle that it's best to give to organizations that deal with street people rather than street people themselves because that encourages street people to stay on the street but i acknowledge also that there are certain people who simply will never reintegrate back into society they don't want to the street is where they are living out who they are and I find it a very complex situation, a very complex topic. So when I heard about a documentary about street people in Somerset West, I thought let's find out a little bit more about that. John Warner is the director of this 48-minute documentary called Beg to Differ. John, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Where did your interest in this material start? Um, every Thursday morning... Um, we have guys who go through our rubbish bins outside our complex. And it happens all over Somerset West and, you know, all through Cape Town on different days. And um, the one morning I got talking to one of the guys, his name's Tony, and was just asking his background, why he is doing this, and tell me about it, a bit about his life. And it was such an interesting story. Um, I, I'm a filmmaker, and so I asked him if later that afternoon he'd want to meet up and we could have a sit down and have a, a nice long um, interview on camera. And he was very keen to do this. So we sat down, had this interview, and it was so, so interesting. Um, and I thought that was going to be it. And then maybe it was just, uh, you know, maybe like a little five-minute thing that I could put on YouTube. Um, but then he introduced me to more people, and the thing just grew and grew. And before I knew it, I'd interviewed probably 30 to 40 um, street people. Um, and kind of now, like five to six months later, um, I've got, yeah, I edited two versions of this film now. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how it all started because i think the, the the general sense is that people are on the street because their lives got too much for them and there was abuse of some sort whether it was abuse of alcohol or abuse of drugs and they stopped being able to live what we might consider a normal life and the street was was the only alternative is that the sort of common thread in the stories that you were told yeah and that was um probably one of the most um, striking and heartbreaking um, parts of making the film was that I'm filming these people who are living in absolute squalor, whether it's in storm drains, um, basically just on the side of the road, but that that is better than how life was at home um, because of, as you said, the, the abuse um, in many various different forms. Um, but yeah, to, to actually live on the street was better to, than to be at home. It's safer even, which is crazy. And how many of them want to get off the streets? Um, I mean, a lot of people that I spoke to um, were desperate to get jobs, were desperate to get off the street. Um, it's obviously, when it comes down to it, it's not as simple as that because um, I think a lot of people also get used to living on the street. So it would be quite a um, process to be integrated back into society. But that would be when you'd use... Um, so places like shelters who, who could even do this slowly, but you could start at the shelter, then they also have kind of communal houses. Um, I think that, yeah, for most people, it'll be a bit of a process because they've become so acclimatised to living on the street. I, I'm, I suspect that I'm not too different from most Cape Tonians in that my... <sighs> Yeah, sometimes I drive past a street person, sometimes there is a street person begging at a street corner. On Tuesday mornings, which is when my garbage is picked up, there is a brigade of street people with their shopping trolleys who are going through our bins and taking out stuff which is not useful to us, but which is useful to them. And I'm with that Tuesday morning interaction, and I, I exercise in the mornings, and so on Tuesday mornings I'm running past a lot of people who are going through bins, and I'm always struck by the efficiency with which they do this, the neatness with which they do it, and the politeness and courtesy with which they acknowledge my presence in their world. Yeah. I mean, that was something that struck me as well with the, the first guy, Tony, that I interviewed. 
um, he showed me, he explained to me the actual, um, almost like a hierarchy of structure to um, how they divide up the bins. They're the same week they have the same five bins. Um, and yeah, how they, I mean, everything's put into, um, so piles of bottles of uh, metal. And then they're very, very um, uh, so conscious of leaving the place as tidy as possible, you know, if not even more tidy than when they got there. Um, yeah, it was amazing. And, and John, I, I, there, there's a sort of constant theme about social justice programs across the world is that they tend to be top down. People who are comfortable and live in decent homes and have salaries, they're very well meaning, they're very compassionate, they're very empathetic, but they tend to think they know what is best for folk like street people. What, I mean, what do the street people say about what needs to be done for them with them? Well, I think um, something that the film deals with a lot, which I really wanted to get across, was firstly just to break down all the stereotypes because people have a lot of, um, well, maybe seven, eight, nine, very strong stereotypes about um, street people, such as they're lazy, they don't want to work, they all take drugs. Um, but, I, I mean, funnily enough, out of, and this was in no way um, uh, done on purpose, but out of my main interviews, not one of the street people was a beggar. Um, they all had a very kind of entrepreneurial spirit, whether it was going through the dustbins, um, getting scrap, um, helping odd, odd jobs, doing parking, um, that kind of stuff. It mm. wasn't actually standing at the robots begging. Um, and the first thing that, that came up over and over again as well from the street people was they would like to be acknowledged, first of all. Um, before we even get into, you know, should we give money and that kind of thing, um, just to acknowledge this person as a human being. Whereas I think what we do, because we've become quite desensitized to seeing street people every day, um, we almost see them as inanimate objects. So the first thing that I think gives, um, the, the first and the easiest way that people can help is actually by, whether it's even a, a, a very small interaction, it could start with a smile. But just to acknowledge these people as human beings, I think that will boost their own self-confidence, um, which and I think is just so important. Do you have uh, distribution for the film on uh, SABC, ETV, anything like that? Um, for the, the longer version of the film, um, I've got a few international distributors who are really keen, um, so we're in talks at the moment, and that's going to be going to film festivals. The shorter version, which is the 48 minutes, um, is more, I think it suits um, church groups or social groups where people can get together and watch the film on DVD. Um, so that one can be got through either the Facebook page or my website. Thanks, John Warner, director of Beg to Differ. The website is johnwarnerproductions.co.za and uh, the Facebook link is facebook.com beg to differ docci, D-O-C-C-I-E.